No, welcome everybody. Um, Perfect. Uh, yeah, how did the session live. go? So hello everyone. I was able to hear already some noises. So we have yeah. our speakers and panelists here online. So welcome to you all. Uh, just a couple, couple of things before we get started and let our uh, moderator uh, start this session. So to all the speakers, now you're in the speaker mode. We are able to see you and we're able to hear you. So please make sure that when you're not speaking, mute your mic. And when you want to speak, unmute your mic. So uh, this just because there is coming a lot of excess noise from the background if you're sitting in the car or wherever you are in the world. So uh, please be mindful of all the other speakers and uh, be sure that you uh, mute your mic. Uh, now, without further ado, this is the panel session regarding education. Uh, we have uh, Linge, uh, who will be our moderator for this session. So I will tune out uh, uh, soon and give the word over to Linge. So uh, without further ado, could you Linge present yourself shortly and then I will give this session over to you. So you have the one hour slot here uh, to talk about education together with the panelists. So welcome Linge. Thank you so much, Ronnie. And uh, yeah, I know you kind of mispronounced my name is Inge with double E. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Inge Lap, um, but back at home in Namibia, I'm known as Inge Kalumbo. Um, I did a bachelor's of social work at the University of Namibia, where I was also very much involved with student politics. Um, and before that, I came to do my exchange studies at the University of Helsinki in the same uh, field of social services. And that's how I got acquainted with uh, Finland and the embassy of Namibia. And we also spent some time working at the embassy as a, a receptionist and administrative assistant. So it has been an honor also learning about the partnership that exists between Finland and Namibia. And that is also why I'm here today, because not only do we need to continue the relationship between Finland and Namibia, but we need to continue also building Namibia and see what we can take from Finland to Namibia. And on that note, talking about education, um, I want to thank everybody here and maybe can all the panelists just uh, shortly introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and uh, yeah, let's start from there. We can start with uh, Leonard. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Leonard Amunime. I'm the Senior Education Officer for ICT. Uh, under the Ministry of uh, Education, Art and Culture. Our directorate is now mm -hmm. NEED, that is the National mm -hmm. Institute of uh, Educational Development. My mm -hmm. responsibility is more on um, training teachers and equipping them with uh, training knowledge on when it comes to ICT, and also mm -hmm. um, coaching them or preparing them on how best they can integrate ICT in teaching and learning. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Leonard. Uh, uh, let's see, Erke, if you would like to go. Okay, yes, I'm Erke Sutin, I'm professor of computer science at University of Turku, but actually based in Windhoek. So I'm leading the our what we call plugin campus um, in Windhoek at the premise of UNAM. Um, so we call it Future Technology Lab because the agenda is actually to, to create um, novel solutions for African uh, challenges, you know, mm -hmm. with people here. We are running a couple of programs, so we are still looking for uh, students interested in doing a master's uh, degree in software engineering. It's a mm -hmm. European degree, but you will do it actually here. Then I have a couple of PhD students already here that I'm, I'm supervising. But our focus seems to be more and more on 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 um, on delivering like very um, intense and short courses together with industries to actually um, you know empower uh, people to to really learn new technologies that would help in in, in solving the, the challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then we will just move over to Malcolm. Malcolm, can you hear us? Can you just uh, introduce yourself? Hi. Yeah. If I can introduce yourself to can us, you yeah. Me? <clears throat> All right, um, my name is Malcolm. Kambanzera has introduced. I'm a second year law student at the University mm -hmm. of Namibia. 
Um, I also serve as the Secretary for Education, um, Training and Research of the Namibia National Students' Organization. Um, deeply um, uh, active in student politics. Uh, and basically, yeah, just what I do. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, who else do we have here? Is Sana here? Do we have Sana on the line? All right. Okay. Um, I think we that should probably just all of us. What about Theophilus? Um, any? Okay. I don't think they have signed in. But okay, we're going to move on now. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for introducing yourself. And currently, you you have all said what you're all doing sounds very very critical and very important, which is something which I really like and enjoy, especially in the field of education and. I think one of it will be very, perhaps not unfair, but let's start off with uh, how COVID-19 has impacted education in Namibia in general. I've seen that currently almost every country has suffered a little bit of a setback and we had to change to online platforms and all that. So I can just ask um, um, Erki, like uh, in your opinion, like, or should I ask Malcolm? Malcolm, you said you are with the student organization, right? Maybe you can just tell us a little bit how things are going there back at home in Namibia and if there's any uh, future plans for the government to do anything related to online education and all that, especially regarding right. how um, COVID-19 has impacted. Okay. Uh, the, the, can, can you hear me? Yeah, Is I can hear you, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, generally, uh, COVID-19 has affected most countries in the same manner. Um, here in Namibia, it's, it's, it's no difference. Uh, what it has disrupted is the face-to-face -face teaching sessions that uh, we normally were used to or used to enjoy. Um, it has now forced us to adapt, you know, uh, other maneuver, other mechanisms of learning. Um, it, it, it has forced, um, especially at basic education, mm. Uh, learners who are used to face-to-face -to -face teaching mm -hmm. now to resort to learning through newspapers, learning through um, WhatsApp groups, learning through radio sessions, uh, and, and, and most who were privy to learning through um, online learning platforms mm. uh, made use of it. Um, but most who couldn't, and, and, and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a fact that most uh, students and learners are financially constrained and are not privy to these uh, technological advances uh, because of their financial constraints. And they are mostly, um, uh, they, they resort to, or they are only privy to learning through the platforms that, uh, you know, do not uh, require much mm. uh, um, financial um, advances. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like radio, um, newspapers, and, 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 and WhatsApp at most. Um, so it, it has affected teaching, uh, as we know, um, uh, very, very, very mm. much. Um, but so how about have do, do what what we have noticed? Do you think that the do you uh, think that the government and the parents have neglected the art of uh, homeschooling in terms of like learning the different skills at home and keeping the children busy and not necessarily that they have to be in school? Now talking about the younger ones now, not the university students. Okay, um, with the younger ones, we've, we've noticed uh, great efforts from parents uh, who have taken a keen interest in the education of their kids, mm. um, particularly with collecting materials from, from, from the schools that they were provided um, for by the Ministry of Education. Um, also, um, taking a keen interest in, in, in the manner that they assisted their kids um, with doing homeworks, with doing the activities that they were given, and so on. But then you find in a situation where a learner is in a rural area, um, and their most uh, their most uh, senior guardian is, is is a grandmother who is illiterate and unable to read, and so those those things pose huge challenge. Uh, to learners who are in situations like that because they do not have any other support system um, when they are out of a school setting. So that's, mm. that's what makes uh, it, it difficult as well. Mm. 
So what, what has yes. the government been doing currently? And anybody, whether it's Leonardo or Erki, can comment if we have picked up something in regards to that. Okay, with regards uh, to yeah. um, the, the land of um, it's, should I answer in terms of basic education or higher education as well? Any, I'll be both, we will be interested to hear what they have done both in terms of higher education and basic education. Okay, in, the, in terms of basic education, basically this, this, the, the efforts that have been there are what the ministry is financial capable, financially capable of rolling out, um, which is the, the activity books, um, the translation of, 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 of school activities or homework activities and so on in different languages, uh, in different newspapers, in different languages as well. So I think that has um, removed some sort of burden from parents who are probably um, able to, 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 to read and write in a particular language uh, and are able to assist their kid who is able to understand both the home language and the English language and so mm -hmm. on. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's how the ministry has assisted in that regard. Uh, education. Mm. Education, um, the impacts were felt uh, rigorously by those who do not have uh, the necessary means to, 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 to participate with online learning. However, um, the Namibia Financial Students, the, the Namibia Financial Assistance Fund, who funds um, students with uh, with with, with uh, tuition and yeah. tuition, um, has come on board, provides students with um, a, 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 a fee of uh, $5,000 to assist them to uh, acquire things like uh, laptops, or just if they have laptops already, assist them with uh, connecting to internet mm. and so on. Um, the, the universities themselves, like the University of Namibia, has resulted also into a partnership with um, the telecommunication giant uh, Telecom, uh, who provides internet dongles mm. to students so that they are able to access the internet as well. So all those interventions that I have mentioned briefly are what uh, have been put in place to sort of ease the burden for students to be able to participate mm. um, in, 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 in online okay. platforms. Right. Uh, and those unfortunately, and those unfortunately who could not uh, are being given a platform right now um, by the universities, uh, particularly the University of Science and Technology and the University of Namibia, who have uh, started offering face-to-face -face, uh, lessons uh, at intervals mm -hmm. now. Okay, okay, that sounds really good. And I ju I'm just curious to find out like, what is the, is, is uh, Erki, the plug-in campus, is, are they doing any collaboration with the higher institutions right now regarding that and introducing like digital learning countrywide or? Okay, thank you very much. So this is a very good question. First of all, I would say that, you know, from, from my experience, I have been now like during the whole time of the virus here in Namibia, and I have been seeing that because, I mean, as universities, we do education, but we also do research. So I have figured yeah. out that actually, you know, we see that, you know, you can do research in Namibia as well as you can do it anywhere in the world. So I, I would say, mm -hmm. that, you know, this, uh, this opportunity show, the technical availability show that, you know, it is possible, it is doable. I have been working a lot on papers, you know, together with my Namibian colleagues and my Namibian PhD students. So, so this has been all going well. But if you mm -hmm. think of education, um, um, I would just, uh, you know, just a couple of months ago, probably already, you know, I, I was reading, you know, this article from the Namibian the, the newspaper that while many people theoretically are connected, you know, and have phones and so, so only less than 2% of the, of the school students actually could make use of online education. So it's very, very small. So we should really focus on, 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 you know, like, like what are the real challenges, you know, in suburbs, mm -hmm. in townships, in, in re rural areas, in remote rural areas. And mm -hmm. now, um, I think that, you know, when we talk about affordable, affordable access, so, so, you know, this is something that, you know, really need to be carefully uh, talked about. Ronnie was telling about 5G. Okay. 5G, yeah. we have mm -hmm. already, you know, some pockets, small pockets in South Africa, and there are some plans, you know, to have something in, in Windows also. 
But then, you know, we need to prioritize between, I mean, these sort of high-tech uh, pockets, if you will. And then maybe, yeah. you know, using available technologies that uh, like 4G, which is really like, I mean, the capacity is, is completely underused. And we should really pay attention to open networks. So which actually mm -hmm. would change, you know, the whole scenario. We should also mm. think of, 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 of using, uh, of uh, rethinking, you know, the, the mobile platforms that, that people are using. I mean, there is this new operating system called Kaios, you know, which basically offers very cheap, you know, phones, which anyway have reasonable opportunities, you know, for delivering education, you know, um, and videos and that sort of stuff. But then, of course, we are talking about not only quantity, like how we can access or how we can basically get like, like I would say, uh, 98 percent you know of the students you know um, um, you know uh, enrolling you know online education but then you know delivery is one thing but then how yeah. to actually change pedagogies because mm -hmm. I, I work from my students you know like from my Namibian uh, uh, I just you know the other day I was talking with one recently graduated bachelor degree holder and he said mm -hmm. that you know in in education you very easily end up being spoon fed you know, like you, you are delivered education and lectures, but that's not the point. So we actually need to, to help people to, to solve problems and, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, like construct solutions. You need to learn by doing. And this is yeah. much, much harder by technology. One of the things mm -hmm. you know, we have been doing and we are developing for this is what we call remote presence. So remote mm -hmm. presence actually means that, you know, you share an environment, even if you are physically far away. So the idea is actually that, you know, learners and researchers can share an environment, you know, say mm. the rural community that will yeah. tackle, you know, how they can promote like health in their community by novel technology. And then you are learning by solving that problem. So something mm. like this. And I, I really hope that our plugin campus, you know, the basically the idea is that you can plug in a university, an existing university, basically virtually anywhere. And then, of course, yeah. we need to use like like this sort of like open networks. We need uh, drastically to develop those with industry. We need to see like you know what kind of phones we use. But I see that there are so so many opportunities. It's just important that we get you know this young talent from Namibia and elsewhere, and we have a lot of that you know involved mm -hmm. and engaged. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Erki, just before you go, thank you so much. I was just thinking that with a plug-in campus currently, um, is it tied to University of Turku. So basically, if, for example, the students complete a master's degree in IT related field, then uh, it will be uh, under the University of Turku's name or how does that work? Yes, actually, you know, whatever we do here, you know, the students will get the certificate or a degree certificate from University of Turku. So that actually yeah. now you can do a European degree in Africa and it's open mm -hmm. to anyone from anywhere in the world. Ideally, we would very much like to see like this sort of multinational, multicultural, you know, groups of students. You can do a master degree, but you can also like do like short projects, you know, like, mm -hmm. like you know, and I, I'm very, very uh, excited of that. And of course, I mean, this is something that was, was established and, and, and um, I would say uh, richly funded by University of Turku. So, yeah. so we are very, very happy to invite also other universities um, you know, to be part of this. We are working, of course, closely with UNAM, but also with mm -hmm. us. And, and, you know, but, but I mean the openness. Whoever wants to, to share with us the challenge of solving concrete, you know, real-life problems on the ground with technology are more than welcome to join. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll come back to you with another question regarding doing a European degree in Africa a little bit later on, but let me just go over to Leonard. And Leonard, uh, what is NEED currently doing, especially, uh, are you thinking or reconsidering changing the way how you train teachers, especially with how we live in modern times that uh, classroom setup are changing and we might be moving to digital platforms, are you rethinking the or remodeling the curriculum for teachers, or what is happening currently? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, before I, I answer your question, I could start with uh, some few few challenges mm -hmm. that we have experienced during this type of, time of COVID nineteen. Uh, since school have been closed, the time have been limited for. Mm -hmm 
for the students to interact with their teachers. That resulted in um, schools using different platforms and means to reach learners. One, as um, Marco has indicated, uh, WhatsApp, uh, some of them were using Google Classroom and so on. Now, what mm -hmm. happened, the ministry mm -hmm. now decided to, to also help the schools and also to make sure that at least all the learners can benefit during this time of COVID-19, of which one was that mm -hmm. um, printed materials were distributed and also stakeholders were also brought to books then that resulted in uh, mm -hmm. media such as newspapers now publishing um, materials, but that is only for lower grades anyway. Also, platforms mm. are also then developed. We are talking of, uh, we are now using Copano as well as um, Notemaster. And again, Okay. Now, this is now where NEAD is also coming in, even though they have been involved throughout all those activities that is taking place, starting from the development of content, uh, the development of uh, the engagement of uh, stakeholders, the, the, the mm -hmm. assessing and um, um, recommending platforms, NEAD have been involved. Now, currently, we are now looking at Office 365. That is what we are currently now using. Uh, there is a component in it mm -hmm. called uh, Teams. Now, we are now training teachers so that they will start now utilizing some of these um, platforms. I should also bring it to your attention that the main challenge here is access. But that access mm. depends on several um, components, not only the devices. Yes, one of the, the, the challenges that you have is connectivity. Even though you want to use uh, online yeah. platforms, we still have schools that are not connected. We still have schools that don't have Wi-Fi. And again, the other mm -hmm. one is now the issue of devices talking of laptops or mm -hmm. computers or tablet for, for one to be able to, to interact on online platforms or to use e-learning, that person must be in position of, um, of a digital device, which can either be a phone, it can be a tablet, it can be a laptop, or it can be a computer. Now, that is one of the mm. challenges. They are not enough. Not all schools, not all learners have access to that. Indeed, only a few, few learners have access to that. The other challenge yeah, I is remember now... The, the, mm. yeah, the other challenge is now the know-how. Um, sometimes we have the platforms. For instance, we can say we have Copano is there. The platform is there. Teachers must use it. But then it is possible that people may not use it if they don't know how to navigate on that platform. Sometimes mm -hmm. also the challenge is on, um, on the development of content. Our system is designed in such a way that most of our educators may have the content that is designed to be presented face to face. So that mm -hmm. content is may not really be fit to be used online. So sometimes a teacher don't have enough content to upload, for instance. The teacher may not have enough mm -hmm. assessment tools to use online. A teacher may not have mm -hmm. Um, may not really know how to best interact on the platform that is there with the students. Not only the teachers. Remember, this interaction must be between the teacher and the student. Sometimes the teachers are good in that, but then the students may not really be able to interact on the platform. Now, due to that, that is when our resistance will come in. 
a platform can be there but it's not really fully utilized why because of yeah. lack of knowledge because of lack of confidence when one is not confident when okay, one I don't think... know how to best the platform then that person may not really but, use the, yeah. the, the 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 platform i think i do uh, agree with you mm -hmm. in that area that uh, sometimes it it takes some skills and some training in order to really make use of different platforms that are available. But um, mm. like, for example, I was currently looking at a video by, uh, what's this man's name? Uh, is it Tim? Uh, he runs this Dololo company, which has, which was carrying out this project, giving laptops to schools, to school students to practice mm. and do different works on, 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 on internet and all that. And I think it worked well. Mm. And one of the things I can say, or perhaps throw it out as a question and, as, and something for all the panelists to consider and perhaps even bring it up to the government, is mm. we often talk about empowering young people, empowering people, empowering this and that. But what if the teachers are the ones to be empowered and actually all the schools that the government spends most of its budget to develop schools and make sure that each school has access to internet, has access to computers, which are equal to the total number of students in that particular school. That way, you, we don't have to have uh, situations like this, that when there is no classroom access, then it also means that students cannot learn. So uh, where is all the government's budget going? I think that's something that needs to be looked into that it should not just all go to salaries yeah. and and that's it and it stops there that's not what education is I, but that the ministry of education uh, should fund all these different projects do you guys want to, to add anything in maybe, regarding that? maybe i would like thanks a lot leonard and 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 um, Inke for for, for these sort of reflections i think the first of all i mm. feel like the, to go, go back to connectivity so i think that you know the priority should be on this openness yeah. uh, first of all you yeah. know, for the platforms, mm -hmm. you know, for example, this Kaios phone, which is a very, you know, good phone, you know, which can actually be used in, in, in the standard education, you know, cost about $20, yeah. you know, like, I mean, it's like almost like a fit, you know, this is a smartphone, mm -hmm. like semi-smartphone. And I think that, you know, the emphasis should be there, you know, not laptops, you know, because they are very expensive, get easily broken and, and stolen or whatever. So we need to think of, yeah. of, of that. And then, you know, um, for the platforms, I think that, you know, what COVID has been teaching us is that, you know, mm -hmm. when there is a demand, when there is a will, so there also will be skills. So I think that, you know, now during the crisis, people who really wanted to learn, even sort of complicated, you know, at first uh, platforms, they also have been able mm -hmm. to learn it. And I think that, you know, we should rather think of schools as communities, learning communities, even like, um, like you know, from the viewpoint of Ubuntu, you know, so whereas, you know, everyone shares the same humanness you know whether to teach or yeah. the learner or the parent so everyone can contribute so i would also like to 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 give like more role for the students to also teach the teachers how to make use of the platform so it it of course requires mm -hmm. like you know the different orientation and as of the contents i would really really challenge you know african namibian teachers and students mm -hmm. to actually create the contents you know, that's really, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, in general, in, in many countries, the, the school curricula are too fixed. Mm -hmm. And we should really seriously talk about, like, the meaningfulness of curricula. We should make more yeah. like living curriculum to actually really, mm -hmm. like, you know, inspire learning, you know, relevant learning. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. And I like the fact that you pointed out that there is skills to be shared here. Hmm. So it's not just that the teacher is the one who is doing the teaching, but students can also teach yeah. teachers, especially when they catch on so fast on how to use different digital platforms. Um, quickly, let's just switch over to Sana. Hi, Sana. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. All right. So you, you have the floor and we're just thinking that maybe you can tell us a little bit about what entrepreneurial opportunities have been created or can be created between Finland and Namibia or what you think is best, especially with uh, how uh, Finland is well advanced with using different technological platforms, but yeah, Namibia is yet to catch up in this area. What do you think? 
represent an area where we have a lot to do also in Finland because I work in early childhood education. But I think that's a super interesting place to uh, be because when we uh, work with the children, we actually also work with their parents and we work with the entire community. So through the children, we yeah. reach a lot of people. So what we uh, mm -hmm. are doing is, first of all, training early childhood educators, teachers, with a holistic pedagogy, helping the teachers mm -hmm. understand how a child learns naturally best through play and exploration. But what we do mm -hmm. as well is we introduce technology as, uh, first of all, a way to help uh, us educate the teachers really from yeah. a distance, uh, also to help the teachers understand what kind of a role technology can play in the classroom environment. Uh, Because we also mm -hmm. understand digital and technology in many ways. It can be the device itself. How does the device work? It can be the content mm -hmm. distribution. How does the content flow to uh, the end user? Mm -hmm. And it can also be about uh, creating and developing the content, uh, like a culturally relevant content. And then very importantly, it has to be, how do we connect technology and digital to the re real world? How do we yeah. bridge it? And how do mm -hmm. we uh, also learn together about how to recreate uh, the future of education? How do we co-create? Mm -hmm. So there are many aspects yeah. to this, but what we are like mainly uh, focusing on is helping teachers, uh, well, empowering the teachers to to use the technology for, mm -hmm. for the better. And with our African mm -hmm. uh, partners, what we're doing is we're trying to overcome the connectivity issues by offering mm -hmm. the trainings uh, from uh, locations where the connectivity is working, but then taking mm -hmm. uh, the learnings from there also to the rural areas, but they are Ru with yeah. offline solutions. Mm -hmm. But uh, the main thing would be to uh, find a way to together train these early years educators, because we all know that if they can manage this, why wouldn't like anyone else be able to uh, manage this uh, digital leap that we know we all have to have to be taking. So what we want to do is find people with whom we can uh, have access to the early years educators, start training them And then starting mm -hmm. a, a fun learning center that would be the model kindergarten, a community basis for like showing off these digital solutions that we are sure will also spill to the, uh, the more wide. Mm, yeah. So a model kindergarten that is also a training center mm -hmm. that works uh, both online and offline is something that we would be uh, like really wanting to find partners to work on. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, you, you said something earlier that, you know, uh, it's, When it comes to children, it's about play and exploration. I have this, I don't know, I'm always thinking that in my childhood, the best thing was when I spent time in the village in the northern part of Namibia with my grandmother, and that's from the age of uh, four to eight. And up until now, I think is the only thing I remember, which I think it was the best learning time ever because I got the experience of farm life, observing and exploring different areas of animal plants everything and i can't help but think do you think that namibia is taking for granted the skills that actually children learn from their grandparents especially when it comes to like uh, in the in the farm in the village life i think well uh, that is the absolute uh, best learning environment when you allow the child to play uh, What yeah. we need to be constantly doing is connecting that to uh, like objectives, connecting that to like overall well-being, health, nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's not just about uh, like what they do learn on the far in the farms are uh, uh, problem solving and uh, like they're uh, developing their senses. They're growing yeah. in connection to other people. So there's a lot like of positive things going on. But what we need to do mm -hmm. is connect that to. Uh, more uh, object uh, and research-based uh, like mm. cur curricular like thinking, and I'm not saying meaning like lesson plan curriculum. I'm meaning we yeah. need to be uh, understanding what are we preparing our children for? What is the life like in the future? Because we don't really mm -hmm. know what kind of challenges they will be like facing, but we need to uh, make sure that we uh, support them in mastering the skills that are necessary. So uh, yeah, many things happen naturally, but uh, we need to like have a leadership in education. Mm -hmm. What are we preparing them for? And then have the grandparents take care of the part that they are best at, but then us also helping these children get on board with the other skills that the, the, the future requires of them. And also one thing that we need to be always looking at when we work in this type of an international context is really mm -hmm. respecting the local culture and the local needs 
So yeah, and understanding that what we're really looking at is how do how does a universal child learn? So the how mm-hmm. does a pe- person learn is something that we can be uh, connecting and uh, learning about and like benchmarking, learning from and with each other. But then what uh, a child needs to learn, part of that is very culturally sensitive. And then part of it is global citizenship. We need to prepare all exactly. the children for the world and not just some. Uh, if I want something mm-hmm. for the best for my child, I need to want the best also for everyone else's child. So this is a, a dialogue that we also need to be like g- g- constantly talking about and the balance between what happens naturally and what should be like guided if we want our like nation to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's really something good. And I think this is exactly what also Ambitious Africa is all about. We want to, you know, bridge the gap and create these platforms where every person is actually connected to resources and we are learning from one another. And I'm just thinking that in terms of uh, what would you say, let me see here, just from, from, from my questions, for example, in Finland, you know, we know that Finland is known for its education. Like, what are they doing in terms of collaboration between Finland and Namibia or other African countries? Currently, your your project that you're working on, um, is it sponsored by any way by Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Embassy of Finland or are there any collaborations or how does this go about? Uh, well, uh, the Foreign Ministry, for example, supports what we do, but uh, we work more with uh, our partners in different parts of the world. And for example, we don't have a partner in Namibia yet. We're working in mm-hmm. with partners in nine other countries at the moment uh, in Africa, just, mm-hmm. just getting started. And we'd love to find uh, the right people to work with in, in Namibia as well to focus on this early childhood education component. Because yeah. Yeah, one super important part of early childhood education is daycare. We need women yeah. and we need girls to be part of our mm-hmm. society and building the society, uh, being able mm-hmm. to study, being able to work and find livelihoods mm-hmm. and become entrepreneurs uh, yeah. empower women and that means that we mm-hmm. have to take very good care of their children for the woman to be able to go and uh, uh, yeah. yeah daycare is a super important component and that means that we should be talking to the people who are responsible for uh, for these types of solutions people who are interested in empowering the the women woman and through the woman the entire community Exactly, Actually, exactly. Yeah, that's, one that's example, really you know, which of course now yes. a bit delayed because of the corona, but, but there is one school, you know, primary school in Turku in Finland, and another primary school, you know, which has been working a long time mm-hmm. here in, uh, with NAST here in Windhoek. And we are actually starting a co design yeah. between them so that actually kids are together co designing solutions, you know, for problems that so that they understand. And we are going to use this remote presence technology that they are really sharing. We have another one related to that in yeah. Finland and Bangladesh, but I think that, you know, these are the grassroots things. And I would also like to say that, you know, not always even technology is needed. We had a uh, just a very small tryout in, in a preschool next to Hosanna Church here in, in Windhoek. And, you know, we were working, you know, with six-year-old kids, you know, in, in learning mathematics by music. And it was amazing, you know, um, experience to see, like, how kids of that uh, young age even can Learn some mm-hmm. some very tricky aspects of combinatorics, you know, in mathematics mm-hmm. by music. So I think that you know, you yeah. know, be very open-minded. And this is of course like related to the games that you know, like uh, you know, kids here have been using, and that but they sort of apply that to 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 learning. And of course, if you think of mm-hmm. the generational learning between grandparents and grandkids. So, you know, the, the vast heritage of, of stories is, is very exciting. And we, we can talk about digital storytelling. But of course, then, you know, the question is like, for example, if you think like how you combine or integrate like tacit knowledge, say, for example, skills to farm with all these new challenges yeah. by the climate change. So you, that you can't really farm in the traditional way. So how we can promote that sort of positive dialogue with the digital storytelling? Mm. So lots of opportunities. I'm I'm really really excited of of the. I think that you know Africa really is now the place to invent new solutions for global uh, you know uh, demand. Mm. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Eric. Um, we had one one of the youngest ministers, Emma Teofelos, but I don't know if she can hear us because I don't see her on the platform here. Um, but uh, but nonetheless, I think we can continue on. Um, I just want to hear again from Leonard. Uh, let's see. 
I'm just thinking in terms of, do you have anything to say in terms of what is currently happening, especially with like with the COVID impacting the Namibian education system? Do you think the government is going to bring down the fees or at least uh, whether it's school fees or in terms of connectivity fees, is that something that they are looking to negotiate with the providers? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Yes, uh, during this uh, stakeholders have been uh, engaged in discussions are still going on. And we are looking at yeah. uh, ways that we can get um, free, uh, inter not really free internet, but free access to educational resources. What mm -hmm. we mean by that is, um, for instance, the platforms that can be recommended by the ministry. Now, we are now negotiating with uh, internet providers or service providers on how best they can assist us. Not necessarily to say either it can be free or it can be maybe mm -hmm. at a lower rate for those educational yeah. platforms. This is to guarantee or to ensure that at least um, a large number of uh, students and educators mm. will be able to access uh, these online learning platforms. Yes, you see yeah. the challenge when it comes to online platform is that one of the, 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 the media that usually that can be used is videos. Maybe you can give notes, you can give um, some voice clip and then you can give some videos as well or we can upload some videos as well. But then this video take time mm -hmm. to load, that's one, and they consume yeah. a lot of data. Now that make it difficult for students or for now to access the content. Because you, sometimes it's not really possible for you maybe to, to, to look at or to watch 10 or 20 videos in a day. And remember, mm. even though we have uh, some some specials from um, internet providers or service providers, the, the amount of the data that you have may not really be enough for the whole month or so. So yeah. what, what, you, what you are trying to indicate is that at least we are now negotiating with um, uh, service providers to see if they will be if they can assist us in one way or mm -hmm. the other. Yeah, what I'm hearing here is that hmm. Namibia as a whole needs to move away from the yeah needs to move away from the traditional way of doing things and actually collaborate with different private partners and also on a diplomatic level and instead of the um, old relations, try to collaborate and find ways to develop the country and we are talking about the times of digitalization and how to make this work for africa because we can't uh -huh. just power namibia alone namibia might be a big country but uh -huh. we the whole of africa needs to be powered up that way everyone can have access to internet yeah i think this is this is something that that really needs to work isn't it and i'm happy that everybody is here and here in the deal room we actually have a platform that after this you can uh, connect with the others and share so you can dis uh, share mm -hmm. your your contact details your email so you can keep communicating and see how to work and form partnership and mm -hmm. this is really really good and I think uh, we are both uh, uh, Mikan how do you say this uh, I think Namibia and and Finland really really wants to continue working together and create opportunities not just for Namibian people, but also for Finnish people. I remember as before coming here as exchange students, we had exchange students from Finland, you know, from University of, of Eastern uh -huh. Finland, University of Helsinki, Tampere, and that was a good opportunity that allowed, you know, skill exchange. And I think that's something that can continue both on, even when it comes to areas of digital, uh, you know, digital, oh, there goes my tongue twister. But yes, mm -hmm. like I said, we need to develop these areas of education, entertainment, entrepreneurship, and see how to bring it out. It's both an opportunity, and especially I think when it comes to funding, uh, I know very well that the 
embassy of Finland or the, or the Finnish government funds different projects based on different themes. And I think each year they have uh, a package for that, that you apply to for funding. And I don't think they will say no to opportunities like this, especially if we want to grow platforms in Namibia. So this is something both uh, uh, young people in Namibia can look into and also vice versa companies that are interested in Namibia. I would like to really yeah. react to what Leonard said about these videos. I think that, you know, now if you think of using videos, mm -hmm. you know, then we are not talking about these 45 minutes lectures, you know, that no one could care less about viewing. But we said, so actually, just focus yeah. on very short, you know, uh, videos, like one or two minutes for, for just, you know, the essence of what you we should learn, you know, to, to basically, you know, join by, by activating like, like exercises and so. And, you know, but these videos also need mm -hmm. to be interactive so that actually you can react to the videos. And I think that these sort yeah. of things, you know, can be done even locally by the kids and by the teachers, you know, in these learning communities. And of course, to deliver them mm -hmm. when we have like these open networks and we have like the, the cheap phones. So then that would solve actually the whole problem very cheaply, very affordably, and also in a way that actually transforms the way that education is done in Namibia. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, very true. Um, just uh, we'll come back to you quickly, but we we have Emma here, uh, the youngest uh, deputy minister in the country. Uh, hi, welcome. We are glad that you could join Thank us. You, Inge. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, now we can hear Great. you very well. Uh, yeah, how has everything been there in Namibia, especially with uh, COVID-19 and all the communications and everything else? Yes, it has been uh, an experience. Uh, as a country, we quickly realized that in times of disaster, we do need to have a crisis communication plan. But also, COVID-19 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. came to expose that ICT infrastructure is important, not only in education, yeah. but also in e-commerce to ensure that mm -hmm. business activities mm -hmm. continue even in times of crisis. So that has been the learning experience. So far. Yeah. And, and are you currently thinking that your office will now need to, to move much more faster and improve the current infrastructures and update everything? Of course. Is that something that you're looking into? Yes, yeah. definitely. I think um, we have worked with education before, um, as well as with the mm -hmm. Namibian College of Learning, Open Learning, where we had programs on the national broadcaster. Um, this was suspended, of course, yeah. because of funding. Um, this was also then reinstated to ensure that children continue to learn um, at the time when schools were closed. Um, the challenge in sustainably having this program going uh, because of a challenge in funding, um, challenge in capacity, but this is the lesson we have learned mm -hmm. to see how this then can we implore sustainable solutions in crisis so even out yeah. of crisis to continuously ensure learning happens even during this difficult time. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, uh, just a question. As a young person, um, what do you think currently is the most urgent thing that the government needs to change, especially when it comes to learning platforms whether it's entrepreneurship education or within the entertainment industry, like what, what really needs to be tackled right now that you can get assistance from uh, different private companies that are currently working on different digital projects and all that? Well, I think the biggest one would be how we adapt our curriculum to the times. Um, mm -hmm. The education system needs to respond to the world as it happens. Um, of course, it's easier said than done because there is a lot that goes into a curriculum development, the training that goes into that, the infrastructure to set up to mm. support it. All of that play a critical role to ensure that the delivery goals are able yeah. to happen. But I do think that there needs to be a shift in how our children learn, mm -hmm. how they are assessed, and how they are. Mm -hmm. rewarded for the way they learn, what they learn, uh, because that way we're yeah. able to have a child not depend on a textbook 
only to get the knowledge they're supposed to get in a subject matter. They're able to employ, they, mm. they need to gain the skill to employ other ways mm -hmm. of learning and, and find other avenues to gain the knowledge they're supposed to have. And the way we assess them needs to reflect the same. That I shouldn't only mm. assess the child to know a definition of a word, but I should allow room for them to bring their own thinking, their own ideas on how they see something and how they define it and be able to reward them for thinking outside the box. So going a step further and getting gaining information outside their classroom or outside of their material mm. given to learn. That, that requires a strategic approach and, and, and perhaps the infrastructure right now is not ready for that. Mm -hmm. Training capacity now is not ready for that. But I think mm -hmm. it's something that we can explore as a government to see how we can circumvent yes. the educational curricula that we have now to allow children outside the box mm -hmm. that they have. And that goes in hand using digital spaces, using other tools, um, and anything at their disposal mm -hmm. to contribute to the knowledge they are acquiring to be able to, to gain them the skills and capacities to navigate through life. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you so much. Uh, there's a question here from Mark Moshiva. He says uh, he wants to know what are the current initiatives in the ministry to allow tech entrepreneurs to help with improving access to information and their other goals? Okay, so if I get the question is around improving access to information. So one, we have set up a government information mm -hmm. communication center. And this is really inspired mm -hmm. by the COVID-19 pandemic where we have daily updates on the pandemic, but it is now being transitioned into one that gives citizens information on a daily basis. And that will then be developed into finding avenues for this through mobile apps to constantly ensure that information is given out. I don't know if Mark is aware, but the access to information bill was tabled yesterday in Parliament by the Minister of Information and Communication Technology. And what the bill yeah. has is to ensure that we have information commissioner. So a body is being set up to ensure that information is available to citizens and that is then able to mm -hmm. transform whether it's a plan, in business plan, other mm -hmm. government uh, agencies or ministries to try to uh, inform activities and programs that are supposed to bring solutions to the Namibian people's livelihoods. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, that, that is very true. I'm, I'm glad to hear that there is a bill that was tabled in Parliament regarding that. Because I think uh, in terms of this, especially when it comes to tech entrepreneurs, I think, um, I don't know if there is a strategic uh, a strategic policy in place for the future of Namibia in terms of digital. digital oh, I don't know why I keep tongue twisting. Yes, exactly. Uh, with, with that, because currently the moving, the world is moving fast ahead in the digital era, and it's gonna require Namibia to move fast, and that also means changing the constitution and all the old bills in order to update That's them. Let me just and I have. To say yeah. that we are currently amending our Communications Act to try to keep mm -hmm. up with that. Uh, and that yeah. has just as consolidating all tech-related laws into then the Communications Act. And secondly, we do have the National mm -hmm. Digital Strategy that is meant to accelerate yeah. all these things so that we're able to uh, prepare for the fourth industrial revolution or even production of 5 mm -hmm. for example. So this will translate yeah. the affordability uh, of one to, to, mm -hmm. to network services, um, the affordability to data. Um, this was demonstrated with COVID-19 that if students aren't expensive to use uh, data mm -hmm. to be able to continue online mm -hmm. learning. So all of these things are contained in the national digital strategy. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, uh, and Madam Sarah Frank from the Embassy of Namibia here in Helsinki also just pointed that out that 
the digital technology challenges needs to be addressed urgently and also that uh, there also needs to be, uh, uh, you know, Mikaon, what do you say this? Provision of power and connectivity, which is a major challenge as well in terms of affordability, just like what you said right now, for especially for students or those who are unemployed. And this is really, really good. Uh, are you, is, does anyone, is anyone aware of the MITC in assisting teachers in making sure that they have like necessary gadgets to provide e-learning where e-learning is possible? And I think maybe this goes for Erki and also Leonard, like in terms of having access to all these different platforms or different uh, technology tools. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back. Yeah, Erki, you said earlier something which caught my attention. And thank you to everyone for speaking. We have about eight minutes and 43 seconds running out of time soon. Uh, but I wanted to, to go back to something that you mentioned that uh, uh, plugin campus basically stands for something that goes as you can do a European degree in Africa. Is that correct? This is something you said earlier. And I was thinking currently, how would you rate the Namibian degree or African degree in general? And why is it, is it that we need to do a European degree in Africa? Why do why does Namibia or Africa in general not match their degree to the European standard? Okay, that's a good question. Well, actually, you know, originally the idea, you know, to to set up, you know, this Finnish mm -hmm. degree or European degree program here, you know, came from from um, uh, from a very high leadership at UNAM, and I think, and and we are of yeah. course working very very closely with the School of Computing here at UNAM. So it, it's the collaboration, mm -hmm. that's the whole idea, plug-in campus. So we plug it in into, into UNAM to actually accelerate and catalyze, you know, what's happening here. I think that, you know, like what we have learned in Finland, you know, from computer science education or software edu uh, engineering education is that it needs to be tightly very close, you know, what, what, uh, to what companies are doing and what startups are doing, you know, so that it needs to be very, very yeah. pragmatic, very hands-on, you know, like, learning to, to, to solve problems with communities and that sort of stuff. And, and traditionally, you know, African uh, curricula are a bit differently orientated, you know, towards more like, you know, information mm -hmm. delivery. So, for example, here, you know, as yeah. I mentioned, I have two PhD students who are also lecturers at UNAM. So they will be enrolling actually, mm -hmm. you know, as teachers also in this program. So we want to learn like things um, together. But also, it's, it's also the interest of University of Turku to actually have a campus here, mm -hmm. to actually learn also to develop like our education in Finland. You know, so because, I mean, our yeah. problems are very different. So we need to also open up, you know, to see all these challenges in Africa. And so that's why, you know, I'm also mm -hmm. very excited of, of getting Finnish students here actually to open up. And so that, you know, like students, mm -hmm. when they are here for the two years, so in the degree program, so then they can already set up their joint ventures. Say that if there are like Namibian students, Finnish students, students from, you know, say a third country, you know, working together, identifying a challenge, then, you know, and by mm -hmm. solving that, they would also earn like, you know, credits, you know, like study credits because, you know, they are learning. So we integrate, you know, like setting yeah. up a company, you know, for your own needs, mm -hmm. solving problems with communities. So it's, it's not that, you know, we would just bring, you know, um, a, a European program. Okay. Um, what we are bringing is that, you know, we are bringing the cert certificate, so you get the certificate, yeah. but, you know, the, the the way that we are delivering, you know, this this whole program is very much a research issue mm -hmm. also. So we want to, to co-design, I would say, also, you know, the curriculum, because, I mean, if you think of computer science or software engineering curriculum, there are just a few courses. Most of the things, you know, uh, take place by projects and, you know, like like even thesis is, is related to uh, uh, how you solve a problem. So this is something that it's, um, I think that it's very much like win-win thing. So um, Finnish universities have done individual projects in like overseas, many of those, but this is not a project. This is like a continuing presence on the African soil and, you know, mm -hmm. seeing all these opportunities. So it is, it is cool thing, but I think that also many African students, you know, want to get the degree. Um. Yes, I think that's it from our side. Sorry that we have to be cut off. Uh, yeah, we are being locked up now and uh, 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Good. Thank you so much, Linga, for moderating this session. It has been an honor to listen to you all. And I think that there is already uh, a couple really interesting uh, things that we can start collaborating with. So really interesting to have all your mm -hmm. panelists here discussing all these different things and aspects of education in this sense. But now to continue this event, yes, thank you so uh, much. I want to thank you all. Uh, and the next panel session is actually starting right now. So we're moving over to the entrepreneurship panel. Uh, with Tim uh, from Dalolo, uh, from uh, Namibia, who will be leading that session. Uh, and we will learn more about entrepreneurship and possibilities within that field, both in Namibia and here in the Nordics. So thank you a lot for, uh, to Linge for moderating and thank you to all the panelists for taking the time uh, to actually help us understand more the situation right now. But now, without further ado, let's move to the next session, our last session for the day, which then will be followed by the one-on-one -on -one meetings the whole day. So thank you so much and see you in a couple of minutes again. Bye-bye.